Hey, most insurance agents think you need to be extremely pushy to get your point across and be aggressive and hard sell. Keep watching this video if you want my opinion on what I'm talking about. I'm gonna talk about the five easy ways to prospect without being pushy, okay? I truly believe that, yes, I may be aggressive in sales, but I do it in a respectful way that doesn't feel like it. And so I'm gonna give you five different ways so that you can prospect, sell more. When you're in front of people, you can capitalize without being pushy, okay? Because prospects can feel it. Just like when you're on the phone, you're making calls, you're selling over the phone and you're smiling and they can feel that, okay? When you're sitting with someone, they can feel if you have their best interest in mind. They can feel if you're trying to sell them. They can feel if you're being pushy. Okay, so I'm going to go over five different ways of how you can prospect without being pushy. The first one is to remove the pressure. Okay, remove the pressure. Let them know that you are just there to educate them, inform them, provide information, and that even if they do business with you or not, it's okay, right? So for instance, when you get when I get an objection, someone says, I'm just shopping, you know what, I, I, I'm not ready to buy, I'm, you know, I don't wanna be pressured, et cetera. I'm like, you know what, excellent, I'm with you. You don't have to do anything today, right? Tell me this, what got you thinking about this, right? So I just totally sh move around it and proceed down the path to the sale. And you have to remove the pressure so that it doesn't feel like a high pressure situation. It needs to feel like you are educated and informing helping, assisting, like you are a problem solver. I remember several, several veteran agents that told me that when I was an initial new agent, okay? Even before I made 100K my first year, I remember a lot of agents telling me, a lot of successful people, that we are, as a salesperson, you're a problem solver. So I want you to think about that. And it doesn't mean that you have to pressure them in to solving their problem. And so I want you to think about what are some ways you can remove the pressure when you're with them? Okay, is there certain places you can sit? Is there certain places you can think? Is there certain places, you know, can, can you, you know, if they ask you for a glass of water, et cetera, are there ways that you can remove the pressure so that during this sale, it doesn't feel like, oh my gosh, this guy is hardcore selling me. That's what we're getting at. Okay, that's number one. Okay, number two is that you need to take your time. Most salespeople think, I need to rush this, I need to, get this sale done as fast as I can, I need to go to the next one, right? All my sales typically have always been 45 minutes to an hour and a half because I take time. I, I realize that a relationship is the most important piece to the sale. So that's why I believe in taking my time, whether I'm on the phone with a prospect or in person, I believe in taking your time, slowing things down, being relaxed, getting to know them. That's why I love warming up and fact finding before I ever present and close. Right? I'm not giving them. I'm not giving them a quote in the first two minutes of me being there. Right? I'm not trying to sell them. I'm not going right into it. I'm I'm taking my time, you know. And that can make it feel like you're selling without being pushy. When you take your time, when you when you realize that the relationship is the most important part to any sale ever. Okay, so that's number two. Number three, then this is probably my favorite one. Let the prospect do the talking. Most salespeople think, for me to be great at sales, I need to talk a lot. I need to puke. I need to vomit. I need to, I need to regurgitate a ton of words. I need to say this special, special phrase or this trick, etc. You don't. You simply need to let them talk. You need to, and, and, and I wouldn't say that the person talking is always necessarily in control of the conversation. That, that, that's a myth as well. You need them talking because I've learned that I make sales when I listen. When I get them talking more than I do, I make the sell. When I talk more than they do, I don't. Because I'm trying to tell them instead of simply asking questions. So I believe that I should let them talk. I believe that if they talk more than me, I will get the sell. And if you focus on that, if you think like that, and you actually ask questions and let them talk, they will tell you why you are going to be selling them if you actually let them communicate in that way and let them tell you everything that you need to know. The key to this, the big key to actually letting the prospect doing the talking is to ask great questions. Okay, I love open-ended questions. You know, I like what got you thinking about this. 
You know, when, when do you plan on doing something like this? You know, what does this look like for you? If you were to do it, how much money would you save? Can you imagine? And if you knew what you, if you knew what I'm talking about, and you took advantage of this, if you did this, what would one year from now? What would your business look like? What, what would your, what, what, what would your life look like, etc. Okay, you, you can ask questions like that to get them thinking, to get them talking. The whole point of a cell, okay, the whole point of a cell is it is a path, and you are trying to take them from point A to point B. Okay, it doesn't have to be this massive freaking crooked line where you're like going all over the place. It can be a, as Belfort says, he's speaking at 8% Nation, as he says, is kind of like a straight line. Okay, it, it's, it's I'm asking questions to get you down the path to where you are almost, where you are literally selling yourself. That's what, that's what sells. I love when I'm asking questions and I'm asking good questions and I'm going down the path and they are selling themselves along the way at every freaking pit stop and I'm not having to sell them on the solution they're selling themselves, okay? The fourth thing is to make them feel comfortable. Make the prospect feel comfortable. How, 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 do you do how do you make them feel comfortable? Well, you, you, you act like you're building a relationship. Maybe you use some humor. Maybe you ask the right questions. Maybe you actually talk about their family and stuff that they want to talk about. Salespeople think we're there to just talk about ourselves and how great we are and why they should buy from us. Our greater product is, our greater company is, our greater price is, et cetera, et cetera. They don't care. People don't buy price. People don't buy product. People don't buy company. Doesn't matter. They buy what do they buy? Think about it for a quick second with you right here, right now. What do they buy? And if you're right, I want you to put it in the comments below that you were correct. Okay? The answer of any cell, I mean, yeah, unless you're going to buy a box of Kleenexes at Walgreens, okay? But a cell, they're buying you, right? They're buying me. They're not buying the price, the product, the carrier. They're buying, they're buying you. Because they like you and you're providing a, you're providing a solution, you're, you're providing conviction, you're providing belief that you're going to help them in a certain way and that this is going to be the solution for you, Miss Betty. And you know what? They're buying into you and your belief, your conviction, and how confident you are that they will end up doing business with you. Okay? Realize that this is, a, this is a, something that's not going to happen immediately. Okay? It's not gonna, you're not going to make this sell in four minutes. It takes time. Okay, you need to be, they need to feel comfortable. You need to smile. You need to laugh. You need to chill the freak out sometimes instead of being so over the top and so aggressive and so salesy and so crazy. Just pause, take a step back, and say, if this was going to take an hour, what would the next hour look like? And it wouldn't be you freaking beating them up for an hour. You know, that's not how sales works. Okay? Number five. How to, how to make it seem like you're not being pushy, okay, is to focus on the problem. We talked about this earlier. Not your product, okay? Focus on the problem, not your product. What your product can do for them, not the product, not the actual product. What can you, being there, selling them this solution because that's all you're doing when you're in sales is you are selling a solution to their problem. That's it. Okay. And, and that doesn't mean that your product is the best freaking solution on planet earth. Okay. But they need to feel that. Which means you need to believe in your product. Okay. So realize that when you're in sales, it's better to focus on the problem that you're solving for them. Because why? Because it feels like it's more them focused than you focused. When, it, when it, you're talking about your product, you're freaking selfish. You're greedy. You're talking about you. Okay? When you're talking about the solution and them and how much this can help you and how these are going to solve your problems and how you talk, said that you, you know, how you said that you're worried about your final expenses being covered and you're worried about your income for, you know, if your husband were to pass away and you're worried about, you know, you're paying off your mortgage when this, 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 and this were to happen or you're worried about, you know, possibly getting cancer or this health problem or your car blowing up or, you know, your house burning down, whatever, right? It's them focused. It's, hey, these are problems in your life. You've told me these are the problems and we have the solution. Okay, so this is five ways, easy ways to prospect without being pushy. Hey, if you love this video about not being pushy, then I've got four ways for you to hit 
your sales goals. It's right there. Go click on it and I'll see you there. Hey, most insurance agents set goals and then very few actually hit them in the next year. Okay, I'm Cody Askins. I set a goal back when I was 20 years old to earn 100K my first year.